to watching Plus Politics. Now, the crisis brewing in the Plateau State House of Assembly has taken a new turn as the embattled speaker Abok Ayuba and some of his loyalists have been arrested within the vicinity of the State Assembly in Joss. Now, the State Police Commissioner Edward Ibuka and some key officials of the different security outfits in the state ushered him into a Helux fan at about 3.15 p.m. after laying siege at the State Assembly since dawn. Abok was taken away through the back gate of the State Assembly shortly after security agents bombarded the peaceful protesters and journalists with tear gas and sporadic gunshots to disperse them. Well, joining us to break this down uh, is Peter Gyengdeng. He is a minority leader at Plateau State House of Assembly. Thank you very much, Honorable, for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. Um, take us through what exactly happened um, the other day at the uh, premises of the House of Assembly. We saw videos. We saw journalists asking even the speaker um, what exactly was the issue between him and the police if he was being arrested. And he wasn't able to say anything. Uh, he was not arrested. Uh, what, happened, what happened was um, yesterday in the morning, early hours in the morning, we entered the House of Assembly because there were security barricades there. So we could not officially assess the chambers uh, due to the problem of uh, the alleged uh, illegal impeachment of our speaker. So we decided that the only way we can air our mind or stand on the part of law is to assess the chambers and uh, do our normal uh, legislative function by uh, sitting. So we accessed the chambers at early as uh, 4 a.m. We waited till 10 a.m. then we started our sitting. So while we were doing that, uh, some uh, members, they are, they, the members that are allegedly uh, removed the speaker, claimed they have removed the speaker, came, break the doors and uh, assess the, uh, the chambers and uh, they started making trouble. On this note, the commissioner of police came, there were, there were tear gas even within the chambers. We all sat there, we said we are ready to die, we won't leave that place until that form of illegality is stopped. So we, we remained there till around 4 a.m. The commissioner of police stayed there with us and uh, when the governor called that we should dialogue, and uh, we said, yes, this is what we want. We want our voice we heard and our demand to be met that our speaker is not removed. He's still to remain our speaker. The other person that is uh, claiming that he is now uh, the speaker, we said he is not our speaker because he was not elected. Um, let, 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 let's backtrack, Mr. Gangdang. Um, yes. Let's backtrack yes. to what really um, transpired before all of this. What led to the split? Yes. Because you obviously are on, uh, in, uh, on the side of the original speaker, the first speaker before the whole house split into two. There's no, there, there's no fake original speaker. No, 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 no. I know, I know this. I know this. But I'm asking, yeah. what exactly yeah. led to the split? Because, of course, the uh, other person came and said that, well, they do have a quorum, and so they're going to suspend the speaker. But what yeah. led to this? What led to the disagreement in the first place? Let's let's uh, educate uh, our viewers. There have been issues. You know, the last time we, the House of Assembly gave uh, the governor two weeks ultimatum to meet the demands of Plateau people about the killings in the state uh, is part of the resolution we made. We made about 10 resolutions, and the governor have met about nine of them. Only one that is yet to be met. But that did not go well with the governor on uh, that, those issues we made. But the major problem was the issue of autonomy. Uh, we insisted that we must be autonomous. And it did not go well to, the, it was a battle between all the lawmakers, the 24 of us, and the executive. So along the line, there was no way out, and we were given a partial autonomy. That resulted into uh, the feelings that the governor feel that uh, the speaker is not respecting me enough. There are other issues. The issue of uh, and when you uh, say partial autonomy, what exactly are you referring to? Is what not, is the partial part of the autonomy? It's not full autonomy because uh, we, the, uh, we also have uh, been given all that we needed to start on our own. But there was some uh, uh, a kind of a political uh, solution to it because there were some. Aspect of the, 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 the percentage that was also get that, were give, that was given to the uh, judiciary because they could not pay salaries. We agreed on that with the, with the understanding that by the end of this year, when they bring the, their budget, 
we are going to adjust so that everybody will be autonomous. Those are part of the things that uh, we're still working on. And uh, the executive field, they want to take it all the, the, in their own way. So we have the, been disagreeing on that, that we want this uh, Hello Chambers to completely stand on its own. And thank God the governor, President Governor, was the former speaker of the State of Assembly. And he has worked, he, know, he knows everything uh, about legislative uh, function. So why would he want to frustrate an institution that built to do to where he is today? So you're, so you're implying, Mr. Gangdeng, that those who um, tried to impeach the speaker are those who are in support of the governor or those who feel that the speaker is disrespecting the governor. Is that right? The speaker is doing his job as the speaker. He's, re he's representing an institution. And uh, those that did perpetrated that act are people that want to, they are looking for favor from the government. And we've said it. People elected us from different constituencies. We have about 24 constituencies in the State House of Assembly. So why won't we stand for the interest of the people that elected us? We can't pay, pay, pay lip service to the, government, to the government. All we need is the things that are needed to be done as the executive and the... Mr. Gendeng, are you still there? It should be done in the proper... Hello? Yes, go ahead. We lost you, your connection for a second there. Yeah, as I said, all we need from the State House of Assembly is to be allowed to be autonomous. I think... We should do things. So, so all these are things that are... So I, I'm, I'm more interested in the autonomous part. Yeah, the, the, yes, of course, everybody's pushing for a, a, a autonomy, um, both at the state and local government levels, especially for local government autonomy, judiciary, uh, and legislative uh, autonomy. But um, is this really just a fight about autonomy, monies, or is this a political fight of sorts? Um, because I'm looking at the, at, at the um, House of Assembly in Plateau State, and the different people who, uh, you know, are members of the, 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 the assembly. Are there no better ways of going about this than splitting the assembly into two and having the police come in uh, to take some people away, even though you have said that it, it was not an arrest, but they were being whisked away? Uh, the issue of autonomy is not all about money. It's about the freedom of the legislative uh, institution. This we know. need to be free to carry to our, our freedom to carry out our functions as legislators without any interference from uh, the executive. But as you know, the executive will always want to have their way. There, there, there are resolutions that the government will want us to, to, to give them. Apologies, I think that um, the internet connection um, with Mr. Gangdeng is a bit. Um, uh, shaky but hopefully we can get him back mr gendeng can you hear me uh let's see if we can yeah, quickly wrap this up uh, yes we know that your uh, connection is a bit poor but let's quickly wrap this up where does this go from here because um we, we we're yet to understand the whereabouts of these men who were whisked away by security operatives are they safe are they sound in their homes um uh, and how, among the, how, how is the assembly going to address this situation? If you're saying that you do not want the executive to interfere, is this the best way to deal with the issues? The best way to deal with the issue is for the executive to stay clear of the, the institution that uh, is uh, and, uh, was enacted by law. These are issues. One, our demands are this, that we should be allowed to deal with our problem within ourselves. The 24 of us should go back to that chambers. If they want to impeach a speaker, they should do it in a legitimate way, not to go by uh, go in the night, six, seven members who are impeached a speaker against the two third majority of 16 members. How possible is that? So all we want is we should be allowed to access the assembly, the 24 of us, let us sit down. If they have the, the two-third majority to impeach a speaker, they should go ahead and do that. But if they don't uh, have, our speaker remain our speaker, and he will lead us till the end of our tenure. All right. Well, thank you very much. Peter Ibrahim Gangdeng is the minority leader of the Plateau State House of Assembly. We're hoping that this issue is resolved sometime soon and uh, for the best, uh, in the best interest of Plateau people.
Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now to listen to a report on ens uh, the ensuing crisis in Plaster State. And when we return, I will give you my take. Anyway. Legislative activity started at the Plateau House of Assembly with eight members sitting and suspending the speaker, Right Honorable Nuhu Ayuba. All eight are members of the embattled speakers or Progressive Congress. We are 24. We, we are supposed to have a minimum of 16 members that will be there to sign and affirm the impeachment of a speaker. To our greatest dismay, we are in the House of Assembly today very early in the morning, we got an information that there was an attempt to impeach our speaker. We went and we found only seven people. Myself became the eighth person before the rest came. This caused an uproar as the nine members of the People's Democratic Party in the House said they did not form a quorum. Security officers later took over the House. The faction that carried out the impeachment later elected Honorable Yakubu Sander as Speaker and went to the Plateau State Government House. The members of the State House of Assembly, both the PDP and the APC, were present on the floor of the House of Assembly. If you want me to mention names, I will mention those names. And it is on tape that they were there. So we have 16 members signed. As the gatekeeper of the executive arm, I um, apparently lead you to His Excellency to formally see him, to formally present yourself to him, so that other details you get to hear from him. In a twist, later in the day, the impeached speaker presided over a sitting of 11 other members of the House. My motion is encapsulated with two different items. The first is a motion of suspension on some of the members of this other chamber that have been found in some levels of gross misconduct and betrayal to the interests of our great institution, the Ninth Assembly. They announced the impeachment of new Speaker Honorable Sander and five other lawmakers for gross misconduct. They also passed a vote of confidence on Right Honorable Ayuba. Let me appreciate my bound out members for this confident vote. It is now a divided house with 12 lawmakers recognizing Honorable Ayuba as Speaker and the other 12 recognizing Honorable Sander. time for my take. Now I'll start this rendition today with a quote by Barbara Taylor Bradford which says the past was always there, lived inside of you and it helped you to make you who you were. But it had to be placed in perspective. Now the truth is many Nigerians are still haunted by the past tragic events like the Nigerian Civil War, the various military coups and the alleged killings of NSARS protesters in 2020. Terrorism the likes of the kidnappings and others have left unhealed wounds in some of the citizens of this land. The vice president advising young people to move forward and forget the issues of the past is applaudable, but it's not as easy as it is stated. My advice to the government is to pursue peace with the various warring factions, even before Nigerians sustained wounds that would be forever etched in their hearts. And in the case of the crisis taking place in Plateau House of Assembly, I ask why? Why are leaders acting like this? How, how will they lead us if they can't even properly maintain a good arrangement? A popular saying says, when there is peace, there's progress. Plateau State has been plagued with insecurity issues over the last few years. How will the state move forward if even the leaders themselves are not level-headed? It bits me, doesn't it? But our leaders need to do better so that our country can go forward. And that's my take. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening.